Hello, YouTube. It is Champion DJK coming at you again with another weekly episode. And as usual, I've got some cool stuff to show you. Um, we're also trying out a new microphone today. Hopefully, it turns out. Hopefully, the audio is better and not worse. Um, we're just going to go for it. We're just going to send her. And hopefully, this microphone works out for you. It's a blue... For those of you wondering what it is, it's a Blue Yeti Nano. It's on sale on Amazon. So that's why I got it. Because it was, you know, cheap. So, or cheap enough, anyway. All right, so <clears throat> I've got some stuff to show. I found an uh, Ultra Red on eBay. Got a deal on this one because it's on a creased card. And the uh, seller was very upfront about the creasedness of the card in his listing and i think that uh turned off some potential buyers but you know works out for me so i got this thing pretty cheap so that's pretty awesome i was really glad to score this on the on the ebay um and then we got also with auto world we got the newest from the racing legends series uh right here number 11 um i'm losing track on what's due yet because i think for some reason, I think they got out of order. Did we get the Bounty Hunters one? I don't think we did. I think there's still two more to go. We got to get the Snake and I think the Bounty Hunters one. And I think then we'll have... I think then we'll have all 12. I'm I'm lost. But I, I, will, I will find myself here. Once all 12 are released, I am going to do a special video on all 12 of these. Uh, we'll take a look at them. I still only have one Ultra Red from this series. Those are going to be hard to track down, all of those, uh, but maybe one day I will get them. They're pretty limited, though, with these being a limited edition of uh, one of $24.96. Pretty much one chase per 48, which is about 2%-ish on the Ultra Reds is what I'm guessing on these. And, uh, yeah, they're going to be kind of tough to get a hold of. All right. Uh, next, uh, I did find some Hot Wheels in store, GK stuff. But just a couple of items that were left behind. I was definitely not first to the case. We got a Koenigsegg Gemera, Gemera, Gemera. This thing right here, odd looking Koenigsegg. I guess what Koenigsegg is not odd looking. Uh, the Lucid Air. This is a um, an electric vehicle, an EV. And uh, I don't really know much about the real car, but this is a real car from Lucid Motors, uh, new for 2022 casting as well. And then um, I think that's it for the new castings. Then we just got a Volvo 850 Estate in green. I think it looks great in green. So we got that and we've got 55 Chev in red. And then we've got the Ford Focus RS. And I think these are all new to G case. Again, I don't know. I have. I've, just been barely been able to keep up with what's coming out. There's just so much cool stuff coming out all the time with uh, with diecast 164 scale. It is tough to keep up. All right, and then I got uh, I did made an eBay purchase. This is an interesting one. So I made an eBay purchase. I got this for like two dollars and fifty cents plus shipping. This is a Johnny Lightning, okay? It was actually in a in a lot of two cars. So a, I think it was like $2.46, something like that. $2 or $3 plus the shipping cost. Um, so two Ford GTs. We got the uh, Hot Wheels here, which I don't, I don't know if I needed this one or not. Um, I'm just going to open it anyhow and then find out that I already have it and then, um, and then end up selling it loose on my table at a diecast meet probably what's going to end up happening this thing i did need though this is actually an exclusive car from a model kit of a ford gt and it was released from johnny lightning it was a johnny lightning model kit that came with this 164 uh car in it so i needed this car and it's kind of hard to find well you can find them on ebay uh, but normally people want about 20 bucks for the model kit and then the shipping's over 10 usually something like that Maybe 30 for the model kit something like that But anyway, I scored this for really cheap and I'm really happy to finally check this one off the Ford GT list This is a casting I collect uh, from Johnny Lightning and I've pretty much I've got I've got a lot of them. I've got Almost all the regular ones, but the funny story is is the guy sent me two packages He sent me a package with this Johnny Lightning Camaro in it, which we will open. 
and that came with this car. And then he sent another package without even talking to me or anything. And I, and they both kind of arrived on the same day, which I thought was funny. He's like, oh, I, sorry, I accidentally sent you the Camaro instead of that other Hot Wheels Ford GT. Should have just reached out to me instead of, I guess, just correcting it right away. Because I probably would have just told him it's fine. Hey, this is really the only car I was after. So, uh, But whatever, we got this uh, bonus here, a Camaro. And we'll go ahead and open it. Why not? Uh, so that would be cool, too. All right. And then I got the last thing I got was uh, mail from Japan, uh, which we got some pretty nice stuff here. I've got the Lamborghini Countach in yellow. I let this sit in my private warehouse at Hobby Link Japan for right up until the time when automatic shipping was going to happen. And because they hold on to stuff, by the way, for you for 60 days, they'll hold it so you can bundle stuff together and put together a box and have it shipped. It kind of saves you on multiple shipments. Um, I let it sit there because you guys, if you've watched my episode where we looked at the orange one of this, my disappointment on this casting in particular with how the doors uh, open and, well, they open, they don't really shut well. Um, so we'll look at this one, see if there's any improvement to it. I doubt that there is. I think it's a casting flaw and just the way it's put together. And I don't think there's anything we're going to be able to do about it. I, but I do did also get uh, two Ferrari, uh, Tomica Limited Vintages as well. Uh, we got a BB512 and a BB512i. Yeah, I. One in white, one in yellow. So that's pretty cool, right? Some more uh, Tomica Limited Vintage Ferraris. I don't have all the Ferraris that have come out in TLV. I've got quite a few of them, all, though. Uh, definitely quite a few. There's some I'm missing. I don't know if I'm going to go back and try to get them all. They're just so dang expensive. Uh, just retail. They're, they're pricey. Uh, they're like, I don't know. I'm trying to remember what these were. They're probably like 45 bucks. And some of the other ones, some of the Ferraris are like 60 right out the gate. So that's expensive. It really is. I mean, it's a quality product, except for this, you know, this Countach was quite disappointing. Um, but other than that, yeah. All right. Uh, sticking with Tomica, we got some Tomica premium models as well that I threw in here. And I just couldn't, I didn't even know if I had these or not. I just bought them literally just to get extras. If I didn't have them, I was going to put them on my table at a local diecast meet and maybe draw some interest into some Tomica premium. But when I got them, uh, I realized I actually don't, I don't think I got these ones. I don't, actually. So these are brand new to me. Uh, we got a Honda NSX-R. Uh, we got a Subaru Impreza WRX Type R STI. And then we got a Nissan Skyline GTR V-Spec. Uh, I think, yeah. And so this one's an older one, I think. These two are newer, um, I'm pretty sure. But either way, I didn't have all three. So surprise, surprise, we got those now. And then um, I also got this one. I don't know anything about this. This is like from a TV show, I think, like a Japanese TV show. Someone will uh, undoubtedly maybe let me know in the comments. I just thought it looked pretty cool. I think it's like Western Police or something like that is what it's called. I don't really quite remember, but it's in like the new Tomica Unlimited line, which is a um, like a pop culture line from uh, Tomica. So they're Tomica Premium Cars with a pop culture twist. Now you may have seen, I did get another one of these. Uh, because these are just so cool. Uh, so the Tomica Knight Rider, I've shown this in a previous video. This was the first from these series I got. These are typically a little bit more expensive than the standard Tomica Premium. You still get the Tomica Premium box and you get this extra packaging with extra artwork. So um, I think they're very cool. And it's kind of neat to see Tomica put some premium kind of pop culture-ish kind of stuff out and having Knight Rider release was really cool. I had to pick up that one and I decided just to scoop this one as well. Uh, there's another one. I think it's a Mustang or something and I don't remember what movie it's from or show it's from. I skipped that one. Maybe I'll go back and get that one some other time. And then lastly, we've got this from Pop Race. I've never had a Pop Race car um, in my collection at all. This is a Singer 911. Um, I got no idea if this thing's licensed or not. Just a Singer 911 in green. It looks a lot like the Tetsuma released. I don't have that thing. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, it's Tetsuma. I think it's Tetsuma. Uh, they put out this. Their first casting was like a 911. I think it's this tooling. It 
it's probably not, but uh, it man, it looks a lot like that does in pictures. I don't have it in real life uh, to look at, but I popped this thing out. I took a look at it, and yeah, it looks very, very similar. So I'm excited for this stuff. Uh, hopefully you guys are. We're going to open all of it, including, you know, the Ultra Red. We're going to definitely open. Excited to get another Racing uh, Legends car. It's one of my favorite hobby exclusive series for these square bodies is the Racing Legends series. I just thought it was something sort of unique uh, in comparison to some other stuff. But pretty cool to get uh, the Pop Race 911 is going to be interesting, too. I'm actually more excited about this than I am about the Tomica Limited Vintage uh, stuff. So let's check it out. Let's smile for a thumbnail. That'll be all right. Right? That good? Sure. All right. Let's go ahead and flip the camera around again. Hopefully the audio is improved. You know, if not, I don't know what to do. You know, buy a more expensive mic. I don't, I, we'll see. You know, slowly upgrading equipment around here. We'll see what happens. All right. Stay tuned. All right. So let's uh, actually start the second part of this uh, video by taking a peek at the mainline cars. Uh, I usually kind of save these for last. So we just blow right through them. But, uh, let's go ahead and just open them up. We've got uh, an orange Ford Focus RS and it looks pretty nice in orange. So it could use some headlight tampos. That's looking real uh, plain up there. But other than that, it looks pretty good. I like the orange with the black wheels. I think it looks pretty decent. You, know, you guys let me know in the comments, of course, what you think. But, uh, you know, <clears throat> it looks pretty good. All right, the 55 Chev. That up. Again, you guys will have to let me know how the audio turned out on this, if you thought it was an improvement over past videos. Feedback's appreciated. Hopefully it is. Uh, before I was just using a cheap lavalier microphone and, um, you know, it served its purpose. It was better than just going raw right into the phone, uh, using the phone microphone, but hopefully this is much better. All right. Then we have this guy looking pretty good. And then the Volvo 850 estate. This looks really good in green. Actually, this might be my favorite mainline. I think it is. Yes, definitely. My favorite mainline release of this car so far. It looks really good in the green. And I'm glad that they put some headlight uh, tampo graphic up in the front. That looks, I think, really good. And then we've got uh, details in the back, too. This is a really solid little mainline car. I'm quite happy with that dollar model. <clears throat> and then we go to the new for 2022 uh vehicles it's just going to take some getting used to here i've got it's a big microphone compared to the other one it's going to take some getting used to just having it kind of in my way almost but uh lucid air we'll probably knock it over at some point <clears throat> there you go right there pretty nifty digging her um, so that looks pretty good. Uh, it's uh, a pretty solid little mainline model. We got uh, the details in the back. We got the details in the front. Um, weird looking. That looks a little weird. <clears throat> Almost looks like my hairline right there. And uh, yeah. Brand new for 2022. Cool little mainline car. I don't really know anything about the real car, so I can't like, comment intelligently about that, but the Hot Wheels looks pretty neat. Koenigsegg, Jamera. Jamera, let's deal with this thing. It's a hypercar that seats more than two. You're not dreaming. The first ever four-seater hypercar. Jamera can go up to 250 miles an hour, ride in style, and bring the family. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're not going to be, you know, Carting your kids around at 250 miles an hour. I would call that, you know, semi irresponsible. But, you know, who knows? All right. And we got another pretty good one with just, you know, headlight details. We got taillight details, and that's it. It appears the axle is just slightly too long for the casting. And other than that, I mean, it's a pretty good looking casting, I think. The car, I don't think, is very attractive I don't, i'm not i don't know koenigseggs rarely do it for me from a looks standpoint um i get it they're cool they're 
really nifty pieces of machinery. I just, you know, artistically, I'm not typically that into it. All right. Moving on, we've got, let's get into the auto world. Let's do the racing legends. So, uh, you guys know I'm a fan of this this series. I've, I've talked about it quite a bit. And, of course, One Stop Diecast has been sending me these trucks. And regardless of them sending them, I really was excited for this series. I'm not just saying it because they hooked me up. In fact, I've been getting duplicates of these. So I've been paying for one from another hobby dealer um, each time they come out. And then they've also been sending me a free one. So I've been able to have one loose and one carded. Uh, throughout the whole experience here. So this is number 11. Uh, you can read the fast facts if you'd like. Again, these are pretty neat because they got kind of drag, you know, classic drag racing um, liveries on these Chevy trucks. And there's a list of all 12 that have been out. Um, it's hard for, to pick a favorite. The Mongoose is a really cool one. Uh, there's, you know, they're just... They've all been really, really neat. I just thought this was a cool idea. You guys may agree or disagree, but they're very limited. They're going to be hard to get later on. Um, so if you're going to purchase them, I would suggest doing it sooner than later. Get it out of the way. And hobby dealers have these for reasonable prices. So uh, very, very cool. And you can get them right from one stop if you want as well. <laughs> That's a one-stop die cast. So very neat. Here we go. They've all been standard ride height trucks. I kind of like that as well. I like that about them as well. Um, and again, they've had various liveries that have been homages to drag racing liveries. You guys are very, very used to the square body casting by now. You know all about it. I know some of you are sick of seeing it. I know I undoubtedly will get a comment regarding, oh my God, another square body, another square body. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Um, <clears throat> I was trying to count them all. Actually, there's over 100 different releases of this square body tooling already since it first came out. When did it first come out? Why can't I remember that now? Um, uh, 2019 release two. That was the first square body released from Auto World. <clears throat> and yes, they're still coming out. All right. And they still will. And they're a popular casting. They're still popular. People are still buying them. They're going to still keep making them. Why not? And it's great for hobby exclusives because it really gives you room to play with and stuff like that with different designs and different stuff. So, you know, love it or hate it, they're here. All right. <clears throat> Next is this Ultra Red. So this is from one of the latest releases from Auto World, uh, which was what? This is 2021 release four. I am missing two Ultra Reds yet from this release. Uh, one of them being the square body from this release. I don't have the Ultra Red for that. And I also do not have the Ultra Red for the Lincoln Continental. So I will need those two to complete this set. And then that will finally be completed. Um, I still need the square body ultra red from the series before it. And I need all of the ultra reds from the series after it. I don't have any of those. So I still need all that <clears throat> to catch myself up to where we're at currently with Auto World. I've kind of been in a lull of getting some ultra reds. This was the first one I think I've really gotten in a little while um, from a regular uh, release. So I've been slacking a little bit, but uh, we'll continue to get on the train here and get the, get these all done. So I, I'm happy to get this one. This is actually a pretty cool looking Ultra Reds for these these releases. I actually really do like the white rims. The red tires, you guys know, I'm, I'm usually not a big fan of, but for some reason they look pretty slick with these white rims. And this car looks pretty awesome. So it's got the black striping on the top. These have ultra red interiors, ultra red body, red tires, white rims, white base. And I think that's it for traits. Of course, we got an opening feature back there. I think Auto World did a great job uh, with this casting. And it is quite popular. It is really cool. And I am glad to check this ultra red off the list. It looks like a little gem. So I'm digging it. We got a little bit of a wonky wheel on the back there, but 
you only have that occasionally. The the ultra red color looks very deep and and nice on this example. Um, so I am quite liking it quite a bit. But you guys know I am definitely biased towards Auto World. I love Auto World. They're like my favorite brand, right? So the only thing I'm really trying to collect all of, and it's a challenge. It's definitely a challenge nowadays. So. Especially if you were to go back and try to get older releases for someone that would be just starting to collect Auto World, good luck to you. It is going to be difficult. Sorry about it. All right. Let's go ahead and continue to move on here. We're going to go to, we might as well open up this Hot Wheel real quick. Mainline release of this uh, Ford GT40. Not the best uh, casting, but it is a casting I do collect. I'm trying to get any example of this that I don't already have. There's a few I'm missing. I don't remember off the top of my head which ones I'm actually missing and which ones I have. I got a spreadsheet for that that I can look at and find out. And if I wasn't too lazy, I would have checked it before opening this, but you know, it is what it is. I'm filming a video on my phone. I can't check it on my phone while I'm filming a video on my phone, so there's that. So this is what we're stuck with. We're going to uh, just open it and hope I don't have it and that this will be new to the collection. So we'll find out later on. All right, and then we have, well, we got that Ford GT. So this is a Ford GT from, from Johnny Lightning. Pretty cool cast from Johnny Lightning. It's a bit, I believe, larger than 164 scale. They've released it quite a few times, actually. There's been quite a few releases of it. There's been more recent releases of it as well from uh, when since Johnny Lightning has been taken over by Round 2 or re-released by Round 2. Um, so there has been some releases in that era of Johnny Lightning and, of course, some from before. The casting, I think, dates back to actually to 2005, I think, is when it was developed. And uh, so it's been released quite a few times since then. Um, it's a pretty easy one, I would say, to collect, to try to get all the variations. Um, there are some, I think, that are going to be difficult to get a hold of, um, but it just depends on how much money you want to throw at them on eBay. And again, I was patient and patient and patient and patient. It would have been kind of cool to get the model kit. I thought about building it and stuff, but I am just really happy that I ended up just getting this really cheap instead. So glad to check it off of the list. So there's that. And then uh, this freebie, Johnny Lightning, Super Chevy, Camaro. Um, I do have an example of this tour, I believe. But, you know, I thought, why not? I'm going to keep this one. Um, looking for a year on the back of here. Uh, 1999. Definitely a little, a little bit older for Johnny Lightning. Got the Goodyear tires on it, rubber tires, metal body, metal base. Kind of a chunky looking little casting, a little bit narrow. It appears a little bit cartoony looking, but not too bad. I think we got an opening hood. Oh, I'm hesitant to bang on the table here because I got this mic sitting on the table. Hang on, that's gonna be loud probably. Why not? Let's test that. Let's see what that sounds like. So sorry to you people that are wearing earphones if that just really caused a problem for you. Um, but there's that. Kind of cool, is it? I don't know, maybe. Um, what should we look at next? Let's look at, uh, we got all the stuff. Next stuff is uh, more import die cast. Let's check out the Pop Race Singer. So if you're not familiar with Singer, uh, Singer, like, I guess... I, I think, from what I understand, they, like, restore Porsches, pretty sure, maybe, or they're kind of, like, roof, maybe, or kind of, like, you know, whatever. They're making Porsches. They, they do Porsches. They, I think they just restore them. I, 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 okay, never mind. Maybe I don't know anything. I don't know if that's a Singer logo. I'm guessing it is. They make, like, luxury Porsches. I don't know. Restore them. But given like their singer twist. But here's the tooling. So, and you guys have probably seen pictures of the Tetsuma ones if you don't have it in your um, collection. And 
you definitely can see some some similarities here and the overall shape and look of the tooling. I like the box that it comes in. I like that it comes with a little thing that, you know, just like, kind of like a mini GT sort of. It's got the box that it can be stored in, which is pretty sweet. It does look quite detailed and, and quite nice. Um, you've got beautiful looking uh, metallic green paint. Um, quality control seems to be very nice. We've got uh, Fuchs style wheels, I think is what those are called. Very nice fine printing there on the engine cover and little plastic pieces for the side mirrors, which look a little bit off center. It's not quite perfect with those. Not too bad though. And it is a metal base, metal body, it's screwed together got some little bit of detail down there in the base. Um, overall, I think it looks really good. The shape of it looks a little, a little off, maybe. I, am, I, am I right? Am I wrong? I don't know. What do you guys have to say about it? It's a good-looking car. I mean... I think so. Rolls pretty nice. Oh, we got a little bit of a wonky wheel up there in the front, huh? And hmm. Yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? This thing wasn't very expensive. I don't remember exactly how much it was, but I was definitely surprised at how cheap it was. Um, so I picked it up. I just added it to my cart and uh, ended up snagging it from Hobby Link Japan. All right, we got to keep moving. We've got next in the lineup here, we'll just go through the Tomica Premium stuff, and then we'll save Tomica Limited Vintage for last. Um, so let's look at these. Let's start with the Honda NSX-R. It is in 160 a scale. If you're not uh, familiar with the Tomica Premium stuff, they're generally right around 160 a scale. They're not quite 164. Uh, it's going to be a metal body, plastic base, plastic tires or wheels and tires, but they are going to look good. It's, they usually have some sort of opening feature, some sort of articulating feature. They come in a box inside of a bag, or a bag inside of a box, rather. Now that on the top, is this top of the or something? No. So here this is, and it looks pretty good. So I think the gen, the general argument as to why people may not pick these up is going to be the fact that they're a little bit larger than 164 scale. I try not to let it bother me with these because uh, they are typically really nice quality. This one has, they got suspension. They typically are going to have inserted details for the headlights and the detail lights. And in usually, like, the quality control in these is just, like, spot on. Um, this one does look pretty good. So plastic top, plastic base. They just feel really nice. The paint seems really high quality. And it just seems that they're a pretty, you know, you could play with these. Like, you could have a, a kid, I think, play with these for quite a while before anything you know, bad would happen to them. And I think they are kind of meant to be, you know, more a toy than a collectible necessarily. Um, and that's maybe why they're a little bit larger, maybe why they have the suspension and why they roll so nice and all of that. But yet they do have some cool details. And typically they have some sort of opening part. This particular one does not. So it's a bad example of that, but we'll check out another one here. I'm guessing this Subaru, so this is a Subaru Impreza WRX Type R STI version, number 30, Tomica Premium. I'm guessing this one's going to have opening doors. A lot of the times they'll have opening doors. I'm going to go ahead and we'll open that up. And again, there's going to be a bag. And then the casting itself. This one is also, is this 160th scale? Usually they do, I'll put it right on here. Oh, it's 161. 
I don't. I have no idea why they come out in randomish scales, and I don't know if it's because they wanted to measure all around the same size. I'm not really sure. But here's your Impreza, and it looks pretty good. So you got the gold wheels or bronzish wheels, whatever. Uh, inserted details, of course, for the tail lights. Inserted details for the headlights, and no opening features on this one either. So I'm, I swear I'm not lying to you. Maybe some of these newer ones are not doing the opening doors anymore. Because usually a lot of times these would have opening doors. Hmm. Interesting. I think they've done the Impreza before in the Tomica Limited line. Hang on one second. Just look at that for a minute. Yeah, they did it. They did it in the Tomica Limited line, which is like a defunct line. It's not this exact Impreza, but I might as well take a peek at it anyway. But this was in the Tomica Limited line. Not quite as good looking proportionately, but it does have opening doors. Just thought that'd be interesting to take a peek at. This was an older line from Tomica they do not do anymore. The Tomica Limited. So they kind of change it and split it up between Tomica Limited Vintage and, of course, Tomica Premium, basically, would have been sort of the replacement, I think, for the Tomica Limited stuff. Uh, Proportion-wise, it looks really good. Again, a little bit larger than 164 scale, so that may turn some of you off. Um, of collecting these, but I think these are really cool. I typically pick up all the ones that come out as they come out. I don't get every single color of every casting, but I get typically an example of the casting. So um, glad I snagged this one. Glad I snagged the, the Honda. And uh, let's take a peek at the Skyline. So this is the Skyline GTR V spec to NUR. Is that short for Nurburgring? This one is uh, 162 scale, and you can see it does have opening doors. Um, so let's go ahead and open that up. I think this one's older. Yeah, definitely an older one. I'm pretty sure it is anyway. Um, I'm trying to see if there's like a copyright date I can see on this. That would give us some sort of idea as to when exactly this came out, but I'm pretty sure it's older. And I don't understand necessarily how their numbering system works, so I can't really use that either as uh, what's going on. Um, but this one does have the opening doors. This one has inserted details for headlights, but uh, painted details for taillights. Still has the suspension. It rolls really nice. Again, plastic base, uh, metal body. Uh, proportionately, it looks okay. It's not the best. This one, 162 scale. So again, we get that random, uh, larger than 164 scale. And it's all right. It doesn't look as good, I don't think, as the other two. And I'm kind of glad actually now looking at these that they don't have the opening doors because as they do it pretty good, that always has this gap here. And I don't think for collectability, it really doesn't add much for me. Uh, maybe for as from a toy perspective, they're probably going to, you know, it'd probably be better that way, um, you know. I know that uh, kids like the, the cars with the opening features. They definitely do. And uh, so that's really probably what these are more targeted towards um, than they are targeted toward, you know, collectors. But that's, you know, technically how Hot Wheels is too. We all collect Hot Wheels. So I would say give these a chance if you if you haven't. If you get them from Hobby Link Japan, you can build up a box of a bunch of these and save it and then just get them all shipped at once. The shipping's not cheap, but when you start spreading it across a lot of cars, it's a lot cheaper than going to eBay and trying to find these individually and buying them. Uh, it's just the way it is. They're actually not very expensive. They're like eight, six to eight dollars, I think, on that website. So this here is this weird Western Police uh, Skyline thingy-majiggy. And uh, we'll just take a look at it. It's, I think this has to be cut open. Yeah, so these are in a clamshell package. It is resealable. So one thing you'll notice about a lot of Japanese die cast stuff that's sold in Japan, and actually anywhere over there uh, in, you know, 
Asian countries and stuff like that, typically a lot of it is resealable and real repackageable. And I like that. I'm going to just leave. Well, we can take a look at the box real quick. Here's a peek at that. Lighting. But you take a look at the box real quick. Tomica Unlimited. And then, pretty cool. Uh, I think it's I think it's Western Police is the the show. Um, I know they've done some Tomica Limited vintage models from that show. I think that's what it is. But and I think there's a Tomica Limited vintage actually of this style. Um, I'm pretty sure there is, and I'm pretty sure it's like extremely expensive if you can find it. But this thing just came out pretty much, and it's pretty awesome. I, I like it. It's plastic-based metal body. We've got some weird little light bar thing going up on top there. We've got the gold uh, rims, uh, inserted details for headlights, inserted details for the taillights that look pretty good. And all in all, that looks pretty awesome. Does it give us a scale? I didn't look. Um, I don't think it does, actually, on this one. Uh, but I'm guessing it's going to be that 160 is scale range. I'm peeking, sometimes they have it printed on the bottom, too. And there's nothing on this one, so I'm not sure. But I'm going to guess it's probably around that same 160th, 161st, 162nd, somewhere around there. That's probably the scale of this item. But I think they're cool. I, I think they're cool. I think they're a good quality car, and they're fun to collect, um, in my opinion. So, And I don't think a lot of people collect them, but I, I definitely dig them. All right, so we got three more cars to look at, and they're Tomica Limited Vintage. And they're Ferrari. We got two Ferraris and a Lamborghini. The Lamborghini is going to be the disappointing one. We're saving that one for last. Um, and I say that just because I know, you know, I've shown the orange one. It's got an issue with the doors. I, see, and I love Tomica Limited Vintage, but a couple things really grind my gears about them. And one is the fact that you have to add pieces on, like glue the mirrors on. We have to do that. Why? Um, these are expensive. Like, give it to us with the mirrors on. Like, figure out a way to do that without them breaking in transit. I don't know if that's the reason why they do it, but there you go. They're in there. They're going to stay in that bag. I am never going to apply those to this because I know I will screw this thing up if I do it. And this is an expensive model. I'm going to take this out. Might as well just take the white one out at the same time. I'm guessing we're going to have the same sort of thing going on with the uh, the white BB 512. Of course, there's going to be some subtle differences because this is a BB 512. The other one's a BB 512i. There's really not much else to look at in the packaging of these. They're nice packaging. They got the foil printing, stuff like that. It looks like almost like a little box for a nice watch. Um, so this one again, yep, same deal. The mirrors uh, are in here and not on here. So it's an irritation. I, I am not a fan of that philosophy, but I still keep buying them. So I guess, you know, I shouldn't complain. It's like, if you're going to complain, stop buying them, but ah, they're Tomica Limited Vintage Ferraris. I can't help but uh, speculate that these are going to be very expensive to acquire later on in life. You should decide that you want them. So even though they're kind of pricey now, I would definitely... If history tells you anything about the prices of Tomica Limited Vintage, uh, yeah, you know, get them when they come out. Because if you don't, you're trying to find them later. <sighs> trying to find a good deal is is difficult, okay? It just is. And I think they did a pretty good job with this tooling. It's not my favorite Ferrari, but they do have an opening piece in the back. I've always thought, though, with this tooling since they come out, is that the wheel arches look slightly off. Um, I'm going to point that out right away. And maybe when you look at the real car, maybe maybe it's not quite. But these are supposed to be like basically true 164 scale. And maybe that wheel arch doesn't translate well in true 164. I just feel like the stance should be slightly lower, and it would look way cooler. But it does have the suspension on this model. But yeah, like that. It looks way cooler. Right? 
course, the angle of these uh, windows here are causing the glare. But look at how crystal clear the glass is on Tomica Limited Vintage. You can see right in there, and it is just like crystal clear. So you get the BB512i, the opening feature. Of course, we have inserted details for uh, the taillights. We would on the headlight. Oh, I think maybe they do down there. But the headlights are pop-up headlights on this vehicle. And then here's the yellow one. Again, there you go. That's better. And then, uh, yeah, opening features. They think they have, a, do they have different motors. Yeah, they do. So you can see that too, which is a nice detail. And you got the motor there, and then the one here. And I'm not smart enough of a Ferrari guy to tell you what the difference actually is between the two. Some nerd might comment in the comments down below, and I don't, I mean nerd is a term of endearment. Um, just a black interior on this one, a little bit more bland. You get the color break between the yellow and the black, too, on the on the body of the car. So these do look really good. They look good. The Ferraris together, displayed together, um, are going to look good because, you know, they're Ferraris. All right, now the Countach. Oh, boy. This casting just really irked me. And, and I talked about it at length when the orange one came out. And I think I'm still a little angry about it, but I had already pre-ordered this, and there was no chance of me um, to be able to cancel it. It was already it was already happening. The wheels were set in motion for me to own the yellow one. And I thought, maybe I'll get the yellow one. Maybe they'll improve it. Maybe it'll be better. And I don't think they have. Major irritation, side mirrors. You have to add them if you want them on, so we're not doing that. Uh, there you go. There we go. Countach. It pains me to have to dog this casting, and it really does because I was so, so excited for this to come out. I'm like, oh my god, they're doing Lambos. The first one that came out was the Mira, and it was beautiful. They did a great job on it. And then I'm like, oh my god, they're definitely going to do a Countach. And then, yes, they are doing a Countach. They're also doing the 25th anniversary Countach, which I also have pre-ordered, and it's probably also going to have the same issue that this one does. And you can already see it there, and it's the way the doors are. Uh, you can tell there's an issue because of the way that these things look. It just isn't good. Um, they don't shut. Okay? And for some reason, it's the uh, driver's side door that does not shut, right? And it's the same way on this one as the orange one that I have. This side shuts better, not perfect, but better than that. And this one just I don't know. It just doesn't shut. And you got to be real careful with these because these are fragile. So the side of them is metal. The top part of the door is plastic. The little itty bitty thin little metal piece is what the hinge is made out of. It's tiny. It's delicate. At least the, the car will display pretty awesome with the doors up. The problem is, is when if you're into photography and diecast photography and you want to take really cool pictures of this, you are stuck with doors up. Um, even if you get this door to shut, you can still see when you're looking at it that this door sticks up. And there, as far as I know, there's no way to fix it. I'm scared to bend it because I think I'm going to break the thing. And I just don't, I don't, I just don't know. And then we also have a. Uh, engine cover that you can that will open to expose the engine but this doesn't really oh, it does click into place and stay up so that's pretty awesome i was just about to say it doesn't but i just remembered it does and you know there it went but uh other than that it's really cool you know you got inserted details for the headlights inserted details for the taillights all the cool stuff you would expect from tomic limited vintage this does not have like a suspension to it a lot of the moving parts ones do not but I just wish they would have just kept the door shut. Have the engine bay open. I know it's tempting to do the scissor doors because the scissor doors are such a signature feature of Lamborghinis of this era. But it's like, uh, if you can't pull it off, why do it? If they could have made this car slightly cheaper to get, 
and would have sacrificed the opening doors because they're like, hey, you know, we tried the opening doors in the prototype. It doesn't look very good, you know, like they're not shutting right. And they make that little, the, the gap especially is noticeable because you have this like air intake thing over here that is just like, doesn't look correct because the door gap there and you know this side looks decent this side just looks awful they should have done something about it the only other complaint i have about this casting is they could have black uh washed the rims and those would look fantastic but that's a generalized complaint about uh Tomica limited vintage they typically don't do that on their wheels and a lot of times they lack a little bit of detail because of it so that's another complaint I would have. Now, I can't recommend that anybody purchases this casting unless you're just way into Countach's and you absolutely have to have it and you're always going to display it with the doors up. I just don't recommend it uh, because of this issue. When they come up with this car in more colors, I'm going to pass on it. And that saddens me to, to have to say, you know, it's happy for my wallet, but it saddens me to, like, have a car come out that's like literally one of my favorite cars of all time the lamborghini countach and have it come out from one of my favorite die cast brands of all time and something that we expect premium quality from and for it to come out like this it just is it's a major disappointment and um one of the saddest moments of my die cast collecting career sure i just I was very disappointed. I still remain disappointed. I when the, the 25th anniversary Countach comes out, which I do have that one pre-ordered, the one in red. Um, I just hope that the door shut. That it has the scissors doors. I'm guessing it's going to have the same problem. Looking at pictures of it, of the sample pictures that have come out, it appears that it's probably going to suffer the same issue, and that is just too bad. All right, that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Thank you very much for watching another one. Again, give me some feedback on the audio. Did we uh, did we accomplish something here? Um, I hope, I sure hope we did. Um, I hope it's all right. And if it's not, you know, we'll keep experimenting until we figure out something good. Um, so, all right. Thank you guys again. You have a great week.